live from the basement car park at Area 51 and broadcast worldwide in association with leading radio stations via the internet. It's the Elegant Universe. Your host, abducted from Melbourne, Australia, here's Peter Gagliardi and Shane Hill. Welcome to another thrill-packed, brain-melting edition of the Elegant Universe. This week, no Frankie. We do oh. not have a conspiracy theory. However, we do have the beautiful Susie J. Good afternoon. Did you miss me last week? Oh, yes, we, we did. certainly yes, we did. did. We did. I missed a all lot. of you. Yeah. I, today, I've brought, uh, I'm going to tell you about a Wall Street millionaire, <gasps> a Ooh. lady who's been in a coma and forgotten everything. Wow. Oh. And I've got I some... wish my wife would do that. Anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, to getting her into a coma, though. That yeah. might be the heart. Anyway. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got some, some great questions for our cool. guests. Cool. Excellent. Cool. We also have the beautiful Hayley. Hi, guys. Yes. yes, welcome back. Thank you. How's your week been? Ah, oh, hectic. Busy. Hectic. Crazy. Yeah. Lots of horoscopes for us today. Well, there should be if the stars give me everything I need. <laughs> yes, and they usually do. They usually do. And they're not the only ones. And your host with the most, Peter. Welcome to the show, Ron. Well, as you know, last week, yeah. I played a lot of Batman. I did oh, like, yeah, we heard. did like yeah, three, three day marathon yeah. non-stop yes. of Batman. Well, this week, I decided to go to Skyrim and ah. save the world yeah. from dragons. So, yeah. yeah. This week yeah. I'm all about dragons. So life's, <laughs> life's busy then. He rang yeah, me three times on. and he's like, "What do I do now?" Yeah, yeah. How many? <laughs> you're like, you know, you you got to save the world. You got to save the world. You know, okay. everything else has to stop. <laughs> everything Priorities. has to stop. <laughs> okay, today is a very special show for me. As you know, over the last couple of months, we've had almost every week, save one or two, we've had a comedian on yes. the show. Mm. Now, as you know, my thing is magic, mentalism, hypnosis, yes. that kind of thing. So, at great expense to myself, and after a lot of negotiation. A lot of hard work. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have finally got to come on the show two of Melbourne's top magicians. Prestidigitators. Guys oh, yeah. who do what I do. So for me, this is a little bit special. I'm kicking everyone out of the studio <laughs> later. <laughs> and I'm doing the interview this week after okay. you girls have done the intros with them and all. Well, these two's, these two guys aren't just normal guys either. They run a, a pretty prestigious com- uh, they run magic room in Melbourne. The biggest and best yeah. magic room in Melbourne. Top Hat Tuesday. I've That's performed right. there a couple of times. It was one of it's one of those things where you know where you've reached a certain level yeah. of success when you get to perform at certain places. Yeah. And Top Hat Tuesdays is one of those oh, places. Yeah. So a little bit later on the show, I with great pleasure, I'm going to introduce you to Baden Hammond and Dom Chambers. Are going to be on the show. Two awesome. of Melbourne's top magicians. We'll be back after this. <laughs> The same brilliant writing team that brought you Massage Parlour Murders and (laughs) Topless Motorcycle Nuns from Beyond Dimension X. It's the Elegant Universe. Welcome back. I believe we've got a horror scope. Rushing for the papers every day To find out what the stars have got to say About the fortunes that are on the way it's crazy, crazy, working on crazy that forever will hold. Success comes from what we do not know. We do. Okay, so Aquarius, this week an asteroid will land on your house. It's not so cool when it happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what have you got for us, Susie? <laughs> Have you ever had hard breakups? Not as in, like, just breakups where it just got messy Uh, and you couldn't get rid of the girl? Oh, all the guys. oh, you're oh, talking like yeah. Scott Pilgrim style where they just obsess. Uh, and and you have to kill all the exes. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Something. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> a Wall Street millionaire, 50-year-old yeah. equity investor, Brad Zipper, mm-hmm. yeah. had to get a restraining order Hang against on, his... his name's Brad Zipper. Mm. Yeah, exactly. No, no, that was my next question. Yeah. 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 Had to get a restraining order against his ex-girlfriend mm. of 28 years old yeah. uh, because... Every time he tried to break up with her, they'd yeah. end up sleeping together. Uh. So he could never break up with her. So he took her that to court story. to get a restraining order. That old order. story. Like, it's <laughs> super common. <laughs> Let's see if I got this right. He's going to court because he's getting too much sex. Well, because he's trying to break up with her and she always so why persuades he keep... him into bed. Yeah, well, no, no, here's, no, that, no, here's the thing. I see the logic, you know, yeah. take her to court because as if they're going to slam in the courtroom. 
Mm. You know, he's like, oh, I am breaking up with you. Yeah, and the yeah. judge is like, yeah, uh, no, 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 behave no, yourselves, no, behave yourselves. Be, the court I will be saw. over. They'll walk out and he'll go, oh, I'm so sorry. And she'll go, you can make it up to me. Yeah, yeah. and that'll be, that'll be on <laughs> again. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a really similar thing on TV. It was like strange 911 calls. Right. <laughs> and so what happened was 911 eventually got a call from a man who'd gone to his wife's house to give her the divorce papers. And like, right. sign these, please. <laughs> yep. And she'd set up the house with cans. Oh, and no. came out in the yeah. costume. <laughs> of course, took him to bed. He wakes up the next morning handcuffed, not yeah. to the bed, but to her. Oh. <laughs> she just handcuffed him to herself so that he can't leave her. Yeah, she and must when... have really liked him a lot. A yeah, lot. and then when he wakes up in the morning and calls the cops, she starts bashing him up. <laughs> and so she's he's like strangling him. him and stuff and he can't get away from her at the same time as trying to talk to the cops on the phone and not die and not really bash her too much. And... <laughs> Now, now, yeah. you, see, you're looking at it all wrong. That's okay. a devoted woman right yeah. there. That is yeah. That's real the woman. <laughs> She's definitely like devoted. she will beat I you crazy down. Is the word you're looking for. <laughs> and or, there's also another 911 call, which was from a, a woman. She rang them, and they're like, you know, what's your emergency? And she goes, oh, I can't hook up. <laughs> oh, no. And they're like, what? And she's like, yeah, can you send a really attractive police, wow. police or fireman around? Yeah. No, this is a true story. Yeah. And they're like, uh, we're sort of not a dating thing. And then she goes, <laughs> oh, no, oh, I just hurt my leg. Oh, I need an ambulance. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, it's well, funny. Okay, if we're still speaking of funny number one calls, I watched a whole TV show on this the other day. So yeah. I am I'm loaded with it. Them. With oh, yeah. And but one of my favorite ones was mm. a guy called up the cops and said, hi, there's been a shooting. <gasps> We're at the basketball court here. Yep. I've been shot. I was hit with a three-point shot. And then the police officer clued oh, in and gone, hang on a second. Three, that's funny. Three-point shot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he threw a three-point shot and the basketball hit me in the head. Tim and he's help. like, can I press charges? Can I press charges? She's like, no, you shouldn't be standing under the basketball ring. He's yeah. like, oh, well, well, can you tell my friends then that it's a penalty and that I get a free shot? Okay. <laughs> so he, put her, he put the police woman on speaker so she could say he gets a free shot. Come oh on, guys. Gosh. How old were these they were adults. <laughs> yeah, pathetic adults. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we're going to a break pretty soon. Don't forget, special guests Baden Hammond and Dom will be on the show. Two of Melbourne's top magicians. They also run one of Melbourne's, well, in fact, not one of, but the mm. top magic room in Melbourne. Mm. Stay See, by. we're so used to comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too, <laughs> many, <laughs> too many comedians on the show. We need top more magic Tuesday? rooms. Is that what it's that's, called? That's, top that's it, yeah. That's the You've place. heard top of it? Tuesday. You've heard of it? Only from doing uh, review, uh, reading research. reviews and research. Yes. Oh, there yeah. you go. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Everyone's right. going to hear of it after today. Absolutely. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the only show where things that go bump in the night actually get invited into the studio. And this is the first time I've said that, and mm-hmm. it's actually got some relevance because we have two of Melbourne's top magicians on the show, guys who run Top Hat Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Wow. Coming up after the next break, Baden Hammond and Don Chambers will be on the show. This is going to be awesome, so stand by for that. Speak of the weird, the bizarre, the unusual, and the things of other worlds, it is time for our next horrible horoscope. Okay, so Pisces, this week all of your left socks will have suspicious holes in them. It's probably too hot to wear socks anyway. And Aries, this week you will cut holes in everyone's socks. <laughs> now they will all appreciate your Christmas socks. Oh dear. <laughs> Christmas socks. Yeah, they're cool. That's weird. Does anyone else wear odd socks all like, the time? Do you, do you just no. do you no, actually I, match me, them up? No, to me they're not odd because I go by thickness, not colour. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Susie's like, uh oh. Yeah. See, I don't even do that. If they, they can be two different thicknesses, two different colours, oh, and no, I still go. No, when I was younger, like yeah. probably when I was like eight or something, I used to. So a couple match of years ago, then. Yeah. 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 Give or take. <laughs> I used to mash them up a bit just yeah. to um, think yeah. I was pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty down with it, pretty trendy. Yeah, it's it's yeah. weird though that I still do it. And and you can actually there's a brand of socks called yeah. Odd Pears. Okay. Pears really. Is the fruit. Someone's actually gone and they, made. They make coordinated odd socks. Oh coordinated so odd be, socks. Yeah, they'll be like the same color scheme, but like maybe the inverse on the other sock uh, or stripes and dots. Or oh, they're not really odd then, are they're, they? No, they're, they're not identical, the yeah. but yeah. they're yeah, yeah they're kind of cool. So, yeah. do you actually consciously, deliberately pick odd socks? To yeah, wear? yeah, I will. No, no, so it's if, not if they're, in, if they're in a nice pair folded together in yeah. your drawer, are you going to undo that pair no, just to get No, no, then, yeah. then I'll take them. In okay. other words, it's laziness. 
It's just right. grab, grab, these will do. Yeah, That's and it's it. become yeah. such a habit that I just... I, just, I, just I don't know. Worry. All right, okay. everyone look at your socks. <laughs> Who's got mine odd socks on? My, my socks, actually. Okay, I'm wearing, I'm wearing not black... Wearing any. I'm <laughs> wearing black Converse's, right? Yeah. And if I take off my shoes, Shane will see here, I'm still wearing black Converse's. My socks match my shoes. What? Holy cow. My socks, you... my socks are made to look like shoes, and yeah. <laughs> but so, speaking of odd socks, have yeah. you ever noticed somebody wearing odd socks and told them and they didn't know, and the shock that they have sometimes? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. Simple yeah. things, but yeah, yeah. it what, shocks them. What, what I want to know is where do, where do the other socks go? Oh, uh, they the dry. There's, I reckon there's this interdimensional void yeah. where there's lots of pens, socks, bobby and, pins, and, and, oh, the and bobby old pins. CDs, and lighters, yep. fl- and yes, lighters, cigarettes. Light. Light is just yes. floating aimlessly yeah. through space. Yes. What do you reckon they're doing together? <laughs> it's a plot. Breeding, breeding a third type of Conspiracy sock. Conspiracy theory. They're probably yeah. on another planet. Like, they probably found a wormhole to another planet and they're planning on like building spaceships and coming back here and taking over. And they're actually yeah. aliens. The end of our world. God, you've got an imagination. Yeah, that's just <laughs> weird. That's odd. Speaking of news, though. Speaking of odd, <laughs> Candace Amp- Emptage. Emptage, E-M-P-T-A-G-E, which is funny because in her memory is now quite empty, so it's funny how her last name actually suits her. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> in 2010, she was driving home mm-hmm. and she had a car accident. Okay. And she woke up, she went into a coma at, mm-hmm. for six weeks, and then when she woke up, she actually thought it was the early 1990s yeah. and that she was 22 years old. Oh, my God, she's there's so many now, movies like this. She's yeah. actually 40, and yeah. she has a 14-year-old daughter. But when she came out of the coma, yeah. she didn't realise that she was 40. She thought she was 22, 24. Right. She didn't even know that she had a daughter. So yeah. that was all pretty freaky. She couldn't recognise anyone. She had a boyfriend of six years, didn't even know who he was. What? She had to relearn how to walk and relearn see for Even when she looked at photos, she still didn't recognise her daughter. Yeah. But then she had mm. a very quick memory of her daughter when she was about two years old. Family almost turned off the light support, except that then they saw her finger move a little bit yep. really? lucky, mm. so she, okay. they kept That's crazy. alive but yeah. here's the thing. So when she woke up in the 1990s, the Spice Girls topped the t- were topping the charts. Yeah, yeah. That's right. when they had their big number one, the first number one. And Charles and Di split. Yeah. Right? Yep. Robbie Williams left Take That, <gasps> causing bitter disappointment with fans. But a year later, Take That split, okay? Yeah, yeah. You remember mm. the band yeah. Take That? Yep. Vaguely. They had, come on, you've got all their, all their CDs. It was the fans were so distraught and it was such an intense thing for all the Take that fans yeah. that there was actually a helpline <gasps> that they could that got put together what? because they needed help in coping counseling. with the fact oh counseling that take that had separated. So, I never knew this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. So does this mean if and when One Direction split, when? the maybe. world's going to end? When? Well, maybe. Because every maybe. major group in history has split exactly. eventually. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what's funny is that when she woke up, Take That were together. <gasps> and right. but then so uh, Robbie She Williams would have did... needed the helpline and it wasn't <laughs> there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's tragic. But now they're back together now and Robbie Williams has rejoined them. So she must be very confused. Okay. Yeah. Just, very just confused. Bre- this does, however, bring up one other point that I think is really important for me to point out now. Yeah. If I'm ever online, my support. Yeah. Do not wait for my finger to, to wiggle move. or move. <laughs> Just turn if, it off? No, no. <laughs> if you turn off my life support, <laughs> I will wake up and kill you. Yeah, okay. Do not turn off well, my that, life support. That's how I wake you up then. I don't care what <laughs> exactly. I don't care what amount of life I've got. Yeah. If it's even the littlest bit, yeah. I'm still alive, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Turned off All right. Off. Yeah. But the whole take that thing, it takes me back to when Molly died on a country practice. Yeah. I was so upset. I wasn't allowed to watch TV for about two weeks because I couldn't stop crying. Really? What? How old were you? I was only about 10. Oh, Oh, that's Well, that's fair enough. But how, so you know what I mean? Like, has there any, ever been anyone, like a group or a singer or, I mean, even Rob, what's his name? Robin Williams, who passed away. Like, that was. Yeah, that was. That was big, but I I didn't cry a river over it. Yeah, I I didn't cry or get upset Mm. about it. And I remember. I thought it's really disappointing that somebody who I'd I'd seen since a kid. Yeah. But we didn't need a helpline. No. (laughs) I was, I was a bit shocked by Michael Jackson when that happened. See, even then, though, I was a bit like. I didn't cry. They had a helpline for when 
Robin Williams died. Did they? Did they? Yeah, yeah they had a counselling service and also but for... But usually they whenever um, a lot of celebrities die now, they just tag on any helplines just in yeah. case you need it. Mm. Like yeah. It's not I specifically remember, the Robin Williams helpline. I remember when Elvis died. Wow. I remember that. Actually, I don't remember Gosh, that. you're old. No, I, yeah, <laughs> I was 17, 16, 17 at the time. Okay. Wow. But here's the thing. You, you talk yeah, you about on. synchronicity, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ju- this all happened, and I can't remember the sequence of events, but I had bought my very, very first ever record because, you know, I'm not into music. Yeah. yeah. It was an Elvis record. One week later, <gasps> he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> oh. I thought, okay. So I went out. Fault. I bought a John Lennon album. No. You did yeah. not. One week later. He's dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. What did you buy when Lady Di died? I didn't buy He anything. walked under a tunnel yeah. at some point. <laughs> no, more, yeah. no more music for you, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Especially do not yeah. buy any Smashing Pumpkins, any My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Yeah. No Kylie. Yeah. No possible. Johnny Depp movies. Or I will turn off <laughs> no, the no, life support. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you've got it coming. Okay. I, think, I think the closest I came to getting upset by someone was um, uh, a wrestler who died. Oh, oh, no. That was it. That was the closest... I got more upset, upset by that. I know. If you're upset by when, wrestlers. No, because it when was the Batman dies and say, Bruce uh, Wayne. Yeah, then there's a real problem. What if your TV had have died during the week while you were having your Batman a thon? Would you would there you would you have needed a helpline? I think, <laughs> I think so. you need a helpline yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it was more like the guy, the wrestler that I was talking about, the way he died was pretty full on. Yes, he was undi- undiagnosed. Steroids injected into his brain. Well, they reckon yeah. something like that because he had undiagnosed mental problems mm. and he went and he killed his wife and his kids and stuff and Jeez. then did himself in and it was huge. Oh, he was called yeah. the Wolverine. He was huge in wrestling and he just went berserk. You like, reminded me of another one, Phil Hartman. When oh, he died. I remember him. Yeah, because his from wife. radio show or something, though, TV he, show. He also did the Simpsons yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, yeah, and his yeah. wife, his wife shot him. Yeah, what? Wow. Yeah. The actor Troy McClure. Troy McClure. You may Troy remember McClure. me. Yeah, that was him. He, he, yeah, his wife as, killed him. Yeah. How yeah. long ago? Ages. ages wow. Ago. Yeah. Well, it'd be ten years now. Easy. <coughs> yeah. yeah. But easy. he was. De- he was on Saturday Night Live and everything. He was destined yeah. for. He would have been. He was already up there. there. Robin Williams. He was destined for yeah. greatness, Great. and yeah. she shot him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, again, as with all situations, if you have recently got married, yeah. beware. <laughs> beware. <laughs> Don't okay, so speaking of which, pretty soon on the show, after this break, stay tuned, because we've got Baden Hammond and Dom Chambers from Top Hat Tuesdays on the show. They'll be interviewed by the beautiful Susie and, of course, me. This will be my first interview on the radio, which will be good because I've been trying to get these guys on the show for ages. This is my little coup. I know. You're so excited. I am. I am a little his bit excited. Sparkly. Yeah. He's hogging it to himself. No, no if we... Yeah. It's mine. Think about it. We've had... <laughs> my we've precious. Had, in this section of the show, in the last section, we did, what, nearly 200 interviews. Yep. In this section, we've done at least 30 interviews now. Yeah. Mm. Not one of them have been people I've oh, brought on. And no. it's my show, people. Oh. We'll be back. <laughs> After this, stay in tune. Welcome to the show, guys. We've got Baden Hammond and Dom Chambers on the show. <laughs> Thanks for, yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. It is an absolute honour to have the two of you here because you guys run the leading magic, magic comedy and magic. Comedy and magic. Comedy and magic. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few jokes there. The leading magic room in Australia at the moment, and that is truly awesome. It is an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, pleasure to be pleasure here. To thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. Good, excellent. We knew it would be. We knew it would be. So we won't we, disappoint. Yeah. We have the, uh, the very beautiful Susie who's going to ask ask you a few questions. During that process, I'm going to be cutting in all the time because there's some stuff I want to know. Hello? Now, I think we are all ready for the last of this series of gentlemen, uh, of demonstrations. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here is Jan Canasta. No, I did not, unfortunately. The theatre was packed with thousands of people. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, didn't get to meet the man himself. Dom? Dom? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been really lucky with my magic. I've been able to perform um, overseas, um, which has been great. Oh, I think 
yeah, yeah, actually, um, this is interesting. Through working, working, I've, I've actually worked some. Uh, I mean, it's a great. I'm actually I'm a student, but it is my is my job. It's my right. source of income, yeah. Yeah. and it's what, what I what I do on weekends. And I, you know, I, I perform wherever they want, like a magician, I suppose. And I perform from you know from Christmas parties to cocktail parties to weddings, yeah. to, to wakes. Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine that? No. Like, I'm so sorry for your loss, <laughs> Ta-da! Mrs. Smith, but uh, is this your card? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to but... make your card vanish, just like Grandpa did. <laughs> oh, when, you, when you get your TV show, that skit has got to be in it. Yeah. Yeah. Children's party clown at a wake. Yeah. Uh, a children's yeah. party clown with Tourette's at a wake. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my that wasn't my favorite one. That was awkward as hell. But uh, my my favorite um, ever job I've done was um, a, a lady called me up and she said, "Hi, I'd like to book you for my daughter's birthday party." I said, "Yes, sure, I can do that." Um, she said, "It's a twenty first birthday party." I said, "That that's fine. I can do that." And I was I was twenty one at the time. And um, she said, um, "I'll just let you know it's." Um, it's only girls at this party. And I said, okay, I can do yeah, that. Yeah. She says, it's going to be 30, 35, 21-year-old girls. I said, I can do that. <laughs> um, I, so I, turned up, I turned up to this event yeah. and uh, it was like a very, I was like a surprise. I was right. behind I was behind this curtain and they were going to pull this curtain down and I was a surprise act. I was going to do that. And they're going, male the, stripper. That's yeah. actually what happened. Yeah. The curtain dropped down. They go, take it off. And I said, no. I said, pick a card. But the, the twist was, the twist was, it was actually a, um, it was a pajama party. So, um, Merry Christmas to 21-year-old yeah, me. Yeah, uh, right. yep, cool. Magic Mike just got a new <laughs> exactly. definition, didn't it? But I heard yeah. it's not the length of the wand, that, but the magic in the stick anyway. So. Bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You're listening to The Elegant Universe. We'll be back with more of our special guests after this. <laughs> that week it's got what used to be on for sale but there was also other and in other you can be taught scams bets and cheating Uh, (laughs) what is this and can I learn (laughs) Dom's like I didn't know this Dom yeah Dom Dom found out a dark secret no that's just um, look they're they're scams for entertainment you can learn how to um, win bar bets that you you know Bar bets you can't lose. So when you're down, right. at, you know, down having a few drinks yeah, with the guys, you'd be surprised That's how cool. many people have gotten into magic through scams and master the art of pickpocketing, and, right. and you know, the, the psychological ploy and all that sort of stuff. Actually, it's actually a very popular type of magic. There's, what's a guy on a guy on YouTube who um, does scams? Have you come across him? Oh yeah, I know exactly. Brian Brushwood. Brian Brushwood does yep. a really good yeah. job of that type of thing. It's all good fun, or and it's yeah, it's really good. So what else did you discover? Susie? Uh, so, um, what else did I discover? Oh, just that you've got puzzles and juggling. So, what do you two focus on and major in? Like, is yours mentalism or magic? Or- yeah, yeah, I, I love the mentalism. Uh, like uh, Shane here, it's the, all that psychological stuff that um, really gets inside people's heads. Yeah. That's where I think the fun is when you can get inside someone's head and cause a uh, effectively a nuclear meltdown in their brain. <laughs> yeah. That's the moment I want to create. Yeah. What um, about you, Dom? Um, for me, I, I, I like to consider myself a bit of a modern magician. Okay. I like to see myself. A demon. What's that? A demon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> um, I like to, I think I'm, I'm kind, I, I like to see my magic style is like 
like Dynamo, but I like to think yeah. that I have a personality. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. 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 Lane, like, <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. I, yeah, that's what yeah. I, that's what I'm going for. Dynamo with personality. For you, is the difference between mentalism and magic? Is there a difference? I think there is a difference, definitely. Uh, mentalism is uh, really that psychological realm of magic. Where, um, it is in the form. It is in the form of and all that sort of thing. For me, it's about um, less about props and objects and visual things and more about let's take a journey inside your head and, and, yeah. and see what we can do with your uh, behaviours and your choices. And can you do anything to me on air today? Oh, gee, I don't know. I'd be Not on that, air. That, that <laughs> she, she's never asked me I, I that. I've been, oh, waiting. Be <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been waiting to ask, will you do anything to me? But <laughs> I, no. get, I get scared to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel comfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Luckily, it's only a radio show. No one can actually yeah. see what's going on. Um, we already <laughs> talked about that, and there will be no mentalism or magic on the show Dang. today. The, what the listeners can't see is I'm actually floating a pair of sunglasses right now. It looks amazing. Doesn't, <laughs> Do, it, doesn't it just? It looks so doesn't good. It, they wish yeah. they could see what's yeah. going on yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, after the break, I would love to find out your inspirations that led you into this path from both of you and find out a little bit more about each of you. You'd like to stick around? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. With the spotlight of the public on Houdini, with the whole world paused to see or hear Houdini step on this side of the curtain. Now let us bow our heads in meditation and prayer. O oh, thou master mind of the universe, Please let the spirit of understanding descend upon us that are gathered here in the inner circle tonight. We are each and each. So the links will be up later on before the night's out. And if you're a magician or a punter who'd like to see some really decent magic, cook up to that. Okay, I've been performing professionally for at least 20 years now. I was before that, for at least 20 years before that, I was trying to perform whenever and wherever I could. And I had to learn the hard way. There were no banner checks. There was no Darren Brown. And doing mentalism, most people I went to said, you're doing what? Yeah. <laughs> and I, th back then, and I'm talking the late 70s, mid 80s, there, there was no reference point to go on. You virtually had to teach yourself. And I trolled through libraries and books and tried to find as much information as I could to perform what I loved to perform. Things are a little bit different now. There's a lot of reference material and things you go to. But the one thing that I think we're lacking is advice from magicians who've been doing it and who know what they're doing. So my question to, do, to you is, firstly, Baden, a young magician comes up and he goes, I want to perform what's the secret how do i really truly do magic i mean i can make a coin disappear i can pull a rabbit out of a hat but what's the real secret to magic what advice would you give to new magicians to be honest it's just it's practice yeah it's get hold of that resource material and books are fine books yeah. worked in their 50s well they've got youtube that. now you can watch you can go everything. on youtube yeah. but you know what i, I still it. i still love the old books that have the pictures and they yeah. make you read it as an art form that it is cool and um and just practice 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 the old professor hoffman that's it i had an old leather born le weather bound copy of professor professor hoffman's book it was like my little bible you see they're what timeless about, yeah what about originality what, what would you say because i look, no offense to anyone out there mm. but i remember in one week i saw the cups and balls performed exactly mm. the same way with the same gags now in comedy that would get you no gigs you'd Absolutely, be totally yeah. but in magic it's a little bit different it's why is that yeah. i think yeah it's like um yeah it's it's a really good good point and you know it's not something i'm i'm particularly a big fan of myself i don't like seeing the same thing yeah. with the same lines as like you said comedy you know that wouldn't be a respected performance if yeah. you went on stage and you delivered the same jokes that the performer last week did yeah um magic is almost like you know a lot of magicians are like cover artists right you know, they cover mm. they, yeah they, they do cover songs basically yeah. but in, yeah. in magic do the classics um, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry i say i say that magicians no not all magicians do yeah, that a obviously, lot of magicians yeah. do that because yeah. you're used to seeing those classics and that you know, it is it is an art form where we do share what we do and mm -hmm. we do pass on what we do. But I do think it is important to put your own spin on what you're doing. So I've, you mentioned the cups and balls, which is a right. classic, and you, yep. you know it's it's been done um, to the hills and back. But I I think if it's done. Uh, 
there there are some incredible performances of the cups and balls. If you if you want to look up Tim Ellis, Tim Ellis does run around Sue. He does the cups and balls, but he does uh-huh. milkshake cups. Yep. And at the end, you know, he's got milk pouring out of the cups yep. and things like that. So I think it is important to become to to be original and put your own spin on you know what's what's already there. Otherwise, yep. you really are you're just covering other people's work. Baden, your thoughts on originality in mentalism? Yeah, I think Dom captured it really well. It's yep. about bringing your own character to whatever you're performing. Uh, when you go up there, even if you're doing the same trick that someone else has already done, no one's seen you do it before. You're your own character. You're yep. your own individual. Uh, and you can bring your own flair to the stage. And so much it's less about the trick and more about the performance itself. I'd say the trick itself is only 20%, 80% yeah, is, is the you. performer. You, your you. personality Absolutely. on stage. Yeah, mm. I look fully agree. Oh uh, Yeah, I was going to say, if you look at the people who've made it, the big magicians, the Penn and Tellers, the yeah. David Copperfield, Lance Burton, you know, they're performing unique original magic, which is their own thing. That's why yeah. they've made it. That's why they're mm. successful. I think that's what magicians have to strive towards so even though the trapdoor might be in exactly the same place as the last guy did it it's how you misdirect away from the trapdoor hey, we can't be giving away their secrets it. on air oh, the, oh, <laughs> no, i think most people look for the trapdoor first that's why i said it because right. we know it's not actually a trapdoor oh more yeah. secrets yeah horoscopes horoscopes this is a bit of magic of my own maybe yeah it's the yeah, best could i be. can do yeah. okay so cancer this week a stranger will say your clothes clash You'll be diagnosed as colorblind. Leo. Dom, is this you? That's me. Okay, so Leo, this week you will be diagnosed as colorblind. You will convince the smelly guy at the bus stop that he is <laughs> colorblind as a revenge. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Elegant Universe. We'll be back after this. Stand by. This is Spirit of Houdini. We wish to contact Houdini. Are you here? Are you here, Houdini? Please manifest yourself in any way possible. Take from this earnest gathering any strength that may be necessary for you to use. Take any vital thing from us that you may need to enable you to carry out your promise of years ago. We have waited, Houdini, oh so long. Never have you been able to present the evidence you promised. And now, this is a night of night. Welcome back to the only show that walks up to the unexplained, pokes it with a big stick, flips it over to find out what's really going on. It's the elegant universe. We've got horoscopes. We do. Okay, so Virgo, this week you'll get a hair elastic stuck in your hair. You'll be mostly bald by the time you get it out. (laughs) And Scorpio, Scorpio, this week you'll cut your thumb on an A1 sized piece of paper. You will nearly bleed to death. So we're here with our very special guest, my special guest for a change, <laughs> mm-hmm. Baden Hammond, magician, mentalist, and all-round good guy. And a bit crazy. And a bit crazy. Well, you have to be, I guess. I think you've got to, to be in today's world. Yeah, and especially doing what you do, running Top Hat Tuesdays and uh, performing magic. Do you do, do you personally yourself, do you do like corporate shows or as well? I or? do when I can, absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're a lot of fun, actually. I okay. love the walk-around gigs at the corporate ones where okay, you go yeah. table to table and just yeah. give people a little bit of a mini magic show. Yeah. yeah. When you're doing that, is it magic or is it mentalism? It's a bit of both. A bit of both? Yeah, yeah. I like to do cool. a bit of both, uh, mix it up, and the mentalism gets a little bit harder as people get drunker. Yeah. Yeah. Then to switch that. to the, yeah. the, the not-so-heavy mind stuff. Yeah. Don't look tipsy. in the box. Oh, it's the box. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, talk <laughs> to us, man. Oh, oh my am. gosh. Yeah, okay. I am. Well, while you guys are like drifting off into space, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. while we're talking about things that are a little bit crazy, mm-hmm. I have a story about a mum who loves her dog more than her son. What? Yeah. How? How this does is, this This is work? heartbreaking. Mm. Okay, so Kelly Rose yep. admits to loving her four-year-old West Highland white terrier mm-hmm. named Matilda more than her 11-year-old son, William. <laughs> oh, and a series of photos have come out of family portraits. Yeah. Oh, the you're mom, kidding. The she's son, even William, f- and the terrier. And she's always affectionately holding the terrier while William is on the side looking... Being poked with a stick. Oh, utterly yeah. depressed. <laughs> well, we got and the it, origin story of the Joker now. So, yeah. You know, yeah, that's exactly. how it works. Yeah. But, but she tries to justify it as well. She's had whole, like, media interviews and stuff. And yeah. so she says that her son is messy and never gives thanks and always has to be told to do his homework. And Fifi only poos in the lounge occasionally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. But, but Matilda... 
Matilda is always obedient and affectionate and she loves the wet doggy kisses. Yeah, but she's not going to choose your retirement home. So yeah. you really yeah. backed yeah. the wrong horse yeah. on that one. But the, the funny thing is that this is related to a study that's happened uh, recently. Okay. Where mums were shown photos, mm. of a whole range of things, including their pets and their children. Okay. And their cognitive responses were measured and yep. they reacted more positively positively to photos of their pets than to their own children. Well, this explains a lot. That would be, you know, because yeah. kids kids can get on your bad side every now and then and dogs don't really. Like, what does a dog do? Stay dog outside. doesn't slap its sister around and then blame yeah. somebody else for it, it might, does true. it? It might pee True. on your stuff, though. If your son pees on your stuff, you've got a problem. But dogs pee yeah. on your stuff all the time. And well, well not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Baiting you an only child or you got brothers and sisters? No, I've got a sibling and we um, we, we also had animals growing up. But, right. Um, I tell you what, we were never in a situation where we uh, felt loved less we were never putting yeah. a kennel outside or uh, <laughs> you know, tied to the tree or anything so no yeah. i have to say uh, i know families where i wish they that, that had happened <laughs> mm. uh, to the kids and not the not the animals yeah i think it's just like um, an anchoring of a negative emotion from the kids because you know if you raise a kid that's not going to listen to you of course you're not going to like the kid no. yeah <laughs> but it, you sort of raise the kids so yeah, it probably yeah. says something about her parenting yeah really. yeah, that, well, yeah that's exactly what i thought when she, oh i love my dog my dog's so obedient it's a dog how hard is it to train a dog not very hard <laughs> but how hard is it to train a kid you know you've got to be on them you sort of got to give them love and affection you know yeah you know it's funny how that works and she also tries to justify it yeah which like, is even worse yeah. you're just digging then, your own hole and that's her justifications that a dog's lifespan is a lot less than yeah. your child's but then yeah. you're basically saying oh yeah i don't care about the first 12 years exactly. of my child's life because my oh, dog's not going to be around there'll exactly. always be another matilda exactly but only one son Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then the son's going to remember that. Mm. Oh, I've just thought of another question. Go on. Baden, favourite <laughs> effect? Favourite effect? Favourite effect. Uh, gee, oh, that'd be a tough one. I have to say it would probably just be anything where you get to go inside someone's head and reveal personal information. <laughs> like that they like their dogs more than their children? Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Like, I think you might have some sort of complex Oedipus Rex syndrome going on inside <laughs> there. And you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a bad mother? Oh, he knows me so well. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, horoscopes. Okay, so Sagittarius. This week you will bum dial your mum while hanging out with your friends. She hears everything. Oh, no. And Capricorn. This week you will finally finish typewriting your novel. Then you will knock your candle on it and burn the whole thing. <laughs> Serves you right, you pretentious hipster. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Elegant Universe. One song. We'll be back to say goodbye. Stay tuned. Back, you've survived another edition of the Elegant Universe. We've had on the show a very special guest, Baden Hammond, magician, Woo! entrepreneur, running yeah. Top Hat Tuesdays. Tell us again, how do we get, to, where is Top Hats and how do we get there? Well, it's on the uh, first Tuesday of every month. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want to come along to a show, you can visit the website, tophattuesdays.com. Yep. Find cool. us on Facebook. Now, why ready. the first Tuesday of every month? Is that a magical Freemason thing? Well, or? <laughs> yeah, I think it's just because everybody hates Mondays. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, Wednesday, is that the middle of the week? Wednesday, you know, exactly. Yeah. That's, you know, that's yeah. midweek, cook a dinner and whatever. And then Thursday, Friday, people are out having a good time. So what does the future <laughs> hold? Tuesday was left. What does the future hold for Top Hat Tuesdays? Are we going to mm. see big international acts? Is it going to become a TV show? Is it, what? what's the future? Absolutely, just more acts, big, cool. big names. We're trying to get our name out there. If magicians are visiting Melbourne, we want to know about them. We want to cool. put them on. Cool. Excellent. Cool. So if you hear anything in the grapevine, mm -hmm. let us know. And then we'll let them know mm -hmm. that it keeps the loop happening. That's how a grapevine works. Yes. <laughs> and also, once again, the beautiful Haley. See you guys. You have a nice weekend. You know yes. who we missed? Who? Frankie. Yeah, I know. We mm. didn't have our conspiracy theory. And I'm, my heart is yep. sad that we missed him For today. a whole week, I've got to think. Yeah. I think, I think maybe his mind's eye got infected and that's why he's not here tonight. Oh. No, he reckons it was gastro, but you could be right. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the the man with the brain wasn't here this week. We miss him, but he will, I am told, be back next week with another cool. conspiracy theory. So stay mm. tuned for that. And apparently we have other guests yep. on the show as well. You know, Tommy Bissett was coming up. Yep. And uh, I'm looking to get more magicians. I want Tim Ellis on the show. Much Absolutely. of other people will be. Can you make any suggestions? Who should I have on this show? Who's the, who, What magicians uh, should I be I looking for? I reckon you need to have Kath Jamison come on. Definitely, Absolutely yep. Absolutely premier magician in Melbourne. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, and Duck Cameron would be my other favourite. Duck, yep, yep, cool. So now that you've heard your name on the show, guys, <laughs> probably best that you come <laughs> on the show. <laughs> so once again, Baden, thanks very much for joining mm-hmm. us. It's thanks been an absolute pleasure. We will get back to you. And of course, Peter... Yep, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. (laughs) On behalf of myself and the crew and our guest listener, I'll ask you to do two things. Be safe and dream great dreams. Cash. That wraps up another life-changing edition of The Elegant Universe. Thanks for being part of the action. We love you. Wherever you go in this great, big, wide, wonderful world of ours, don't forget to tune in next time. Cash.